All right, I put on these glasses so that my eyes don't look so tired from working up this morning. Uh, but what we need to do now is check out that Monte Carlo simulation part of the orthogonal linear contrast chapter where what we do is we run the ANOVA and do some linear contrast and do that 10,000 times. And let's see how many times we reject the null hypothesis when we just look at that one F value from the omnibus test or if we look at all of the F values we get for each of the contrasts. And this raises the issue of uh, what we can call alpha per comparison and alpha for a family of comparisons. And we'll see that they're different in this context. Okay, we're gonna be talking a little bit about family-wise error rate. We're gonna use a Monte Carlo simulation to talk about that. We're looking at something we've seen already in this lab from the textbook, an example of the ANOVA table when you are going to report some of your orthogonal linear contrasts. So in this example, the textbook doesn't report the overall F value for the omnibus test, but it does report the four F values for each of the four linear contrasts. And if you remember, the average of these F values add up to the same value for the overall F test. So there's a sense here in which you've done one overall F test, but also four overall F tests for this family of linear contrasts. Now, what are the implications here for things like type one error rate? If you were to run this experiment, say 10,000 times, and your alpha value was 0.05, how many times would you uh, reject the null hypothesis when it was false? When we're thinking about just the omnibus test for that one, where you get that one F value. And if you were to break down your omnibus into linear contrasts, well, how many times would you make a type one error there? Let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna assume you've read chapter 12, 3.2, where these issues are discussed with a Monte Carlo simulation. I'm not going to read this, uh, but I'm assuming you have. And what we're gonna do in R is try to re redo this Monte Carlo simulation and produce a table something like this to figure out how many times we would make a type one error just for the omnibus test and how many times we would do it overall for those linear contrasts. So let's head over to R here. All right, so a big issue is we're gonna be thinking about this concept alpha PC. That is the uh, alpha you should maybe have if you're thinking about um, on a per comparison basis, the alpha value for a single test. And we can also talk about the alpha value per family of comparisons. And if we think about our set of orthogonal linear contrasts, we could think about that as a little family of related or in some sense, completely unrelated orthogonal comparisons. Let's get into this with our Monte Carlo simulation. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna follow the basic idea from the textbook. And in that case, there was six groups and 100 observations per group, and they were all sampled from a normal distribution, the same normal distribution. So I made a quick data frame here called sim data that has data from six groups, 100 observations per group simulating the null. Now there is six groups, so there's six minus one orthogonal linear contrasts. And I just made some up here, and I kind of did it by hand, I defined the first one to be a test of one versus two. The second one was going to be three versus four, and then four or five versus six. And then I made one that basically says, let's think of group one, two, five, and six as the same and cost, contrast them with groups three and four. And then another one where let's think of, let's just ignore groups three and four and think of one and two being the same and five and six being the same. All right, I put them into a matrix and I wanted to double check that I actually made orthogonal contrast. So I ran the correlation and I can see that uh, nice little identity matrix there showing me that each of my contrasts have zero correlation with the other ones. Now, um, we could have defined different orthogonal linear contrasts. There's quite a few that we could have picked from, but here's one example. So I'm gonna assign these contrasts to the contrast for that independent variable. And if we run this ANOVA, 
we can see an example of conducting uh, an ANOVA on our simulated data. And this ANOVA reports the F value for the omnibus test. So this is asking, you know, across all the groups, do we have some evidence for a difference between the means? We've got a F value and its associated P value here. And I've set it up to report the individual orthogonal linear contrasts also. So what I want to know is if I repeated this simulation, say 10,000 times, how often am I going to get p-values less than, say, 0.05? I'm going to use 0.05 as my alpha. So how often will I reject the null even when the null is true? This will be a measure of type 1 errors. I also want to look at the p-values for each of the linear contrasts here. I want to see how many times I reject the null um, for each of those linear contrasts, and that would be a type 1 error also. I'm going to take a strategy here in terms of running the simulation. I want to save the necessary data from the simulation in a data frame that can then be analyzed later to look at the results. So here's how I did it. I just created a blank tibble, and this will run for 10,000 times. Uh, before we look at that, let's just step into this little loop here and see what I'm doing. Try to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Okay, for every run of this loop, we create random data. We assign the contrast we previously made to the independent variable. Um, then we run the ANOVA. And I save the value of the ANOVA into this variable here. Finally, I create a little tibble that saves the results of this simulation. Let's take a look at what it shows in this little thing. So here's the results. What I wanted to know, or, or what I wanted to save was um, whether we are looking at the p-value from the omnibus test, that's the p-value at the top of the table, or whether we're looking at a p-value from a linear contrast. So what I did was I made a little column called type that codes omnibus versus contrast, and then a column that says what the p-values were, and a, another column, this reads off the current simulation that I'm running. And that, so I've already conducted this simulation, and i is currently 10,000. So how did I get those p-values? Um, if we look at sim output, here's our ANOVA table, and I wanted to save these p-values here and I jumped into this object with two square brackets, the number one, this goes into the list, dollar sign, then I can go down and find the p-values, here they are, and the first one, two, three, four, five, six of them, so one to six, if we add that one to six, we get those values. So that's how I extracted the information I needed. If we started off with all sim data being empty, what I'm going to do is add the results of my current simulation to the bottom of this data frame. So every time I run a new simulation, I'll just keep adding to the bottom. And at the end, I'll have the results from, from the entire simulation. So if we started off with i equals 1, well, let's just do, it, do the loop real fast here with um, just 5 simulation so we can see what happens. So this thing, all sim data, starts off being empty. There's nothing in it. If I run this whole loop, at the end of the day, I'm getting data that has the p-values, all the p-values for the first simulation, coded as whether it's the omnibus test or the contrasts, all the p-values for the second one, and so on. And I've done five simulations. OK. So I'm going to set this to 10,000, and I'm going to press play. All right, that took about a minute. Um, let's move on. So we've got all the data here, simulated this 10,000 times. Here's all the results. We could keep scrolling through all the simulations. And this, you know, we could look at it and see how many times we rejected the null. To do that, I'm going to analyze this data using dplyr. So for example, 
here's a little set of pipes that I can take my simulation data. Uh, I want to, what I'm first going to do is create a new column called type one. And I'm just gonna say, if the p-value is less than 0.05, you know, give me a logical value, true or false. Just tell me if it's true or false. Then I'm going to group by type and the simulation number. And I'm gonna count how many type one errors I had. So if we just look at what that looks like here, we can see, for example, that in simulation number one, there was zero type one errors for contrasts. In simulation two, there was zero type one errors. Looks like in simulation eight, there was one type one error amongst those five linear contrasts. Oh, in simulation nine, there was two. And we could go down and, and look at all this information. I'm gonna do one more group now that I have this counts column. I'm going to group by type and counts. I'm gonna sum up the counts as a function of the type of F test, whether it's the omnibus or the contrast. So we can do all of that. And here's the basic table that I get. And I can see right here that for the omnibus test, there are 523 cases where I found a type one error. And for the contrasts, there's these different frequencies. Um, let's an analyze those in terms of the concepts of uh, our alpha values per comparison and our alpha values per uh, family-wise comparison. Note the type one error rate for the omnibus test is pretty close to 0.05. So what I can do here is pull out that frequency, the number of times, from, that's from this table here, I'm just trying to get this 523. So that's the number of type one errors I made. Now remember I did 10,000 simulated experiments. So as a proportion of 10,000, we found roughly 5% type one errors. Let's look at the linear contrasts. Now we conducted 50,000 total linear contrasts because there was 10,000 experiments, five linear contrasts, so that's 50,000 total contrasts. And what I wanna do is add up all of the type one errors that were made, and there was 2,442 of those. So as a proportion of 50,000, we see again that our type one error rate is about 0.05 as it should be. However, let's now consider the family-wise type one error rate. It's a sense in which we conducted 10,000 simulated experiments. And if we ask the question, what's the probability of rejecting the null if any of the linear contrasts were significant? Well, how many linear contrasts were significant in total? 2,442. And if we divide by 10,000 experiments, we get a different proportion. 24%. Okay, this was meant as a supplement to the textbook discussion of these issues. Um, the textbook goes into a, a further discussion of correcting for multiple comparisons. So as you can see, I don't have a long concept section for that here. We'll discuss this in class a little bit and you can read my basic perspective. I think that you should um, do what you feel is justified. Uh, what I typically do is report uncorrected p-values, but I also report how many tests I conducted. For the most part, the corrections can be applied to those p-values if you know that information. And so I usually leave it up to the reader to decide what they think is appropriate. And that's just a strategy I've adopted over time. And some, I mean, sometimes I do re do the corrections also. So it depends what um, what I'm trying to do at the time. Okay, that's it for this video. The next one should be about non-orthogonal contrasts.